you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your grace, O oh Lord, that is sufficient. Thank you for all that you've done and yet going to do, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that we are learning, Father, to walk in Christ. As we come this morning, Father, sitting at your feet to learn from you, O oh Father. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would stir up the Holy Spirit on the inside of each one of us. And that the Holy Spirit would illuminate our hearts and our minds to comprehend and to understand what you are speaking to us individually. Teach us, O oh Lord, how to search the scriptures, O oh Lord, to know you. Teach us, O oh Father, your character and your precepts that we may be imitators of you, O oh Lord, and not of the world. We thank you for your word, O oh Lord. For your word is truth and your word is life. So we thank you for your word, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord. In the name of your Son, Lord God, we magnify you and we praise you, O oh Lord, because you are wonderful to be praised, O oh Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for understanding and enlightenment, O oh Father, in your word. Father, that it would change our very being, that it would change our hearts, that it would change our souls, Father, that our minds would be renewed each time we read your word, O oh Lord. And Father, if, the, if we have sins hidden in our hearts, we ask for your forgiveness, O oh Lord. You would deliver us, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Yeshua's name, we pray. Well, good morning, beloved, to you. Good morning. This is Women of Grace, a voice in the wilderness. And I'm Sister Grace, bringing the Word of God before you again another day. This is March, this is April the 7th, 2017. Hallelujah. And the Lord is good and greatly to be praised, beloved. If you have not, if you are not on our mailing list to receive the Romans lesson, as well as spiritual strategies and kingdom living, please write wog.vitw at hotmail.com. Thank you, Father, for thy word. For thy word is truth, O Lord. Glory to God. Well, good morning, beloved. Good morning to you. Hallelujah. It just seems, hallelujah, that the days are getting shorter. And it feels like the hours are getting shorter, too. Here we are in the month of April already. Glory to God. And my birthday is, is Sunday. 
Hallelujah. A lot of people like to say Sunday is the resurrection day and in all actuality. Hallelujah. It's not. It is the Passover. Hallelujah. It is the Passover. Hallelujah. Um, paganism has been was introduced into the Christian church through the Romans and that's where you get Roman Catholic from hallelujah when many of those Romans the Gentiles receive Christ as Lord hallelujah receive Christ hallelujah as Lord and Savior they were worshiping other deities they were worshiping about other gods and because they did not want to give up their gods they integrated the pag the pagan system into Christianity and that's where we get Easter from <clears throat> that's where we get the word Easter hallelujah and if you really think about it beloved see we we are, the Lord said that my people perish because of the lack of knowledge because we refuse to do research we refuse to do research on why we worship on, on certain holidays why do we do that was it, tra was it hand down by tradition or was it something that God has given and most of these holidays, beloved, is 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 um, man-made, really. Easter represents fertility, represents spring newness. Hallelujah! I had a video on um, should Christians should Christians celebrate Easter, and if you could see the pagan. Um, symbols in Easter you have the egg you have the bunny of the egg and the bunny hallelujah spring the egg and the bunny are are, are, are in pagan paganism we must do our, our research into the history of the church and where all of these these certain holidays came from what what was their origin because it was not so in the first church they did not worship they did not celebrate Easter beloved in the first church you would find the word Easter only one time in the book of Acts hallelujah and when I looked it up hallelujah in the concordance the word Easter was the Passover the Passover just happened to fall on this pagan holiday but it's the Passover and our Passover is uh, represent, uh, is Christ the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world hallelujah but let us uh, get on into our study. We are um, we have been doing the study in the book of Romans, and we are on Romans chapter eight verse twenty nine, and we are on lesson twenty one from our online Bible college. Yesterday, we jumped into the subject of discussing three dimensions to Christ as firstborn. And this is part part two of that subject. Three dimensions to Christ as first born. And if you would, beloved, get your swords in your hands and turn to Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Colossians chapter 1, 
verse 16. Thank you for your word, O oh Father. Thank you that you give us understanding and enlightenment concerning your word, O oh Lord. Father, penetrate our hearts and our minds, Father, by the illuminating light of Christ, the Messiah, that we may understand, Lord, what Paul is speaking of when it comes to the three dimensions of Christ as the firstborn. Help us to understand it, Lord, that we, Father, may be in agreement to your word, O Lord. We thank you, Father. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. First Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, verse 16. I'm sorry. Verse 16. Go to verse 16. Hallelujah. As firstborn over all creation. Hallelujah. Jesus also has special inheritance. The three dimensions of Christ. Let me do a review. Of, uh, let, let us go back. Do a recap of the three dimensions to Christ as firstborn. The firstborn's role we have seen in Jesus has special position, special inheritance, and special responsibility. And we're going to talk about the special we're going to continue the special inheritance that Christ Jesus has as firstborn. And Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 reads, For by him all things were created, things in heaven and, thing, and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 proclaims of Christ in these last days God has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he has made the universe Christ's inheritance heir of all things and Christ's creative action he made the universe and linked and link are linked together he is heir of all things. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 Because all things were created by him and for him. As the firstborn over all creation, everything he created is his inheritance. As the firstborn over all creation the Lord Jesus inheritance also includes an inheritance of worship and honor and again when God be brings his firstborn into the world he says let all God's angels worship him as the message so beautifully puts Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 to 20 for everything absolutely everything above and below visible and invisible rank after rank after rank of angels everything God started in him and finds its purpose in him he was there before any of the any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to to this moment he was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection par parade he is supreme in the end from beginning to end he's there towering far above everything everyone so spe so spe spacious is he so roomy that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. If you would, beloved, turn your swords to Ephesians chapter 1 and hold your place at verse 20. Ephesians chapter 1 and hold your place at verse 20. Thus we see that Christ's supremacy in position translates into supremacy 
in inheritance. Just as he is far above all things in position, so he possesses all things as his inheritance. The magnitude and breadth of his inheritance match the magnitude and breadth of his position. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 and 22 reads, which he produced in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion whether angelic or human and far above every name that is named above every title that can be conferred not only in this age and world but also in the one to come he and he put all things in every realm in subjection under Christ's feet. <clears throat> and appointed him as supreme authoritative head over all things in the church. Christ is the head of all things. special responsibility turn your swords to Luke chapter 19 hold your place at verse 10 Luke 19 verse 10 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You know, I didn't... I did not... Hallelujah. Begin to have allergies until I moved out to California.
Thank you, Father. I'm back. Hallelujah. I mean, my my um, speaker just basically everything changed. Just I, I and I didn't touch it. I didn't. I did not touch any of the controls, beloved. It's like it changed on its own. But the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Glory to God. Um, special responsibility. Luke chapter 19. And we're going to look at verse 10. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. And I think I said that. And that was the last that you guys heard me. Which in turn means I will have to do this. I will have to do the live broadcast over again. <clears throat> for the simple fact that there's a lot of interruptions going on there. Good morning, Sister Blue. Yes, yes, it 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 just went out. Hallelujah. All of a sudden. Glory to God. But see, um me with these allergy attacks <clears throat> being congested. Hallelujah. Well, praise God, Sister Blue. Praise the Lord. We are, uh, yes, I still have my cold. Yes, I do. Uh, here in California, it's so dusty, beloved. It, I mean, it's all kind of particles in the air, all kind of particles in the house. I'm going to have to invest in me a, a humidifier, a air <clears throat> an air cleaner because I did not have start having these problems until I moved to California. It is so dirty here. The in the air that is. I mean the environment, all that, that's clean. But in the air itself. And uh because I'm breathing in this dirt. I mean, you can wash your car one day, you go outside, the next day it's dirty all over again. So it's because of the sand. Yes, it's all those those chemical the chemicals here that are uh, in in uh, that are being spread. See, we have no green trees out here. Hallelujah to oxygenate our air, and it's nothing but sand flying around. The chemicals, all kind of stuff is flying around. Hallelujah! But I'm I believe God with me. Please believe God with me that the Lord will would shield me and heal and heal me from uh, the effects of what I'm breathing. You know, a lot of people say I'm trying to get stay in good health and all this, but you breathe in dirty air. You're breathing a poisonous air. Hallelujah. But we are, and I'm going to have to, hallelujah. We were, uh, we on page eight. Sister Blue in the uh, lesson 21, and uh, before we got, before we went blank, hallelujah. Um, Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. Oh, okay, okay. Hallelujah. It's all kind of things that is happening in our world today, beloved. All kind of things that's happening in our world. Man is the number one cause of the destruction of our planet. Because we're so thirsty for things. Want more. We're never satisfied with have being content with the things that we have. We want bigger cars and bigger houses. No, beloved, I can't. Uh, me and my daughter, we thought about. Um, we've been discussing uh, where to move to get out of California. But it's, it's beautiful here. Hallelujah. And uh, we haven't came up to a decision on which way to go. Because wherever you go, 
it's it's the same wherever you go and man is the reason hallelujah we we want bigger things better things you know bigger and better things hallelujah and you know I, I tickle people you know they get these big old giant cars right I said oh that's your house on four wheels because it is like paying a house note on four wheels because we want bigger and better things we the heart is never satisfied uh, the lust for things is insatiable in the heart of man and that is why it's so important that we must learn to die to ourselves. You know, the flesh has no glory in God's presence. And um, we have to be transformed into the image of Christ. To be selfless. Christ was selfless, not selfish. And in our churches today, among those that call in the name of the Lord, I have never in my life seen so many selfish Christians. And they're being taught this garbage, this false teaching from the doctrines of devils, that it's okay to think about yourself. Hallelujah. To be selfish. Where's that at in the Bible? There is nowhere in there. Matter of fact, Christ speaks completely against it. Love is selfless. Hallelujah. True love, the agape love of God is selfless. Christ gave himself. Hallelujah. Christ gave himself <coughs> on the cross. Why, why did you take it down, sister? Why did you take it down? Christ gave himself on the cross in a, self, in a selfless way, beloved. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. And we as believers... You know, how can the world, Jesus said, that the world shall know you by the love that you have for one another. The church is supposed to be completely distinct and separated from the things of the world. But yet the, 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 the lost, the world cannot even recognize the true believer, the true Christian, the true person that's following in the way because the world has seeped into the church we have taken on their customs we have taken on traditions of the world integrating it into the world we have even taken in the love that the world has and we put we place a stamp on it because we put the word on it and say this this is God beloved is not Christ has commanded us to come from up out of the world if you was in the spiritual warfare strategy class you have learned that this world system belongs to Satan and he has hallelujah ministering spirits that are perpetrating as Christians, as leaders, as apostles, as prophets in the church. Hallelujah. This is not a game. The, the world, the war is real. It's real, beloved. Hallelujah. Oh, okay. Glory to God. Yesterday I was talking to a young lady that the Lord has on my heart to minister to her and uh, she she got pregnant and I asked her well is the man is the young man going to marry you and her first words out of her mouth is I don't want to get married she says and this is what she says she said I, we want to work on our relationship build our relationship on trust hope and faith 
I got stuck in faith, beloved. I'm what you mean by faith? Having faith in God. I got stuck, beloved. Right there, I got, I mean, I, I got stuck. How can you have faith in God and you're living in sin? How is that possible? I know, beloved, that when I was in a backstate and, uh, backslidden condition, hallelujah, my relationship with God was severed. God, Even though God never left me nor forsaken me, he gave me room to repent. Hallelujah. Because I was in, 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 in a backstate, my, our relationship was severed. And how can you build faith on a lie that it's okay to sin? The church, hallelujah, is now, hallelujah, calling uh, evil good and good evil. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Blue said they should have worked on their relationship before they had bad sex. Hallelujah. And now, mind you, this young lady's her, her, her grandmother is a pastor. And I just looked at her. What you mean build build your build up faith? I told you you need to really sit down and have Bible study with me. See, because something is wrong there. You don't want to get married. She says she didn't want to get married. Um, but what if Christ showed up on the scene in that instant to receive the bride you will be lost I told her I said you and your boyfriend you both need to repent you all need to repent and get your relationship right with God because you all seem to think that you are okay at what you're doing is okay and it's not and this is how the church has been so deceived into thinking okay I will receive Christ as my Lord and Savior but I'm going to continue in sin oh he'll forgive me I'll work on my relationship with God and uh, yesterday I mean my spirit hallelujah was crying on the inside for this young lady because you have no idea what you're speaking out of your mouth. That if Christ returns and you're found in sin, beloved, hallelujah, you will be left behind. God is calling us to be separated. Hallelujah. I'm no better than you. I'm no better than anybody that listens to me. I'm a sinner. I am capable of sinning because I'm in this flesh. If I take my eyes off of Christ the Messiah, I can fall, beloved. I am not super, Supergirl. You know, and I even watched the TV series Supergirl and I was highly disappointed. If I take my eyes off, eyes off Christ, then I am I am I am open, I am vulnerable to the temptations and attacks of Satan. If I don't read my word and understand what it is saying through the Holy Spirit, I am vulnerable. And this is what is happening to our young people today. They are being fed lies. Oh, you don't have to get married real soon. Oh, you can take your, your time. It's not okay, beloved, to live in sin. It would destroy your life. It won't do it quickly, but I guarantee you, it would slowly eat away your relationship that you had with God. Slowly. Sin would destroy your relationship with God because it suffers you it, it, it cuts you away from God 
And if Satan can bless you with sparkly things, hallelujah. If Satan can bless you, you know, Satan can bless you to keep you in sin, to keep you from the reality and the truth. Hallelujah, that sin separates you from God. It suffers your relationship. And many today, my fact, many today are, are this is happening to them. They're being blindsided with material things of the world, not realizing that those material things of the world will separate you from God the Father, Yahweh, the great I am. Sin is not acceptable in the Christian's life. It just simply is not. It will destroy you. Hallelujah. People like to say that David, King David, was quick to repent. Let me tell you something, beloved, about King David. David not only plotted murder, he had a man killed because he didn't want the man to find out that David slept with his wife and not only slept with her, got her pregnant. So he plotted and planned for this man's destruction. And this is how the enemy operates. For a moment, David had slipped into sin. For a moment, for a year to be exact. David did not see his error so that he can quickly repent. It was a year that passed, beloved, that David was walking in this sin. He was completely blindsided by what he did. He had no remorse, no guilt, no nothing by what he did. He felt because he was king that he can do anything. But it took God spoke to the prophet Nathan to go and talk to David. This was after a year, beloved. David did not repent quickly. But God gave him room for repentance. To the point that God himself sent a prophet to David. To shake him up out of that thing that he he didn't found himself in. See, Satan wants to blindside us, beloved. He wants to blindside us and think that the way that we're living is okay. He wants us to think that living in sin is okay. Oh, repent! Uh, ask God for forgiveness; He'll forgive you. We have taken God's grace. His mercy and his love for granted. And we're teaching others that it's okay. Anybody, if you guys know me, anybody know me, I'll tell you in your face. That's sin. That is not the way to God. And I guess, you know, that's why I don't have, I guess that's why, you know, not too many people like me. But hey, I don't care. I truly don't. It's a young man that I know. Matter of fact, my uh, God uh, son, he's lost, you know, and his mother always asks me to pray for him. And whenever I call, sometimes he's there. And, and the other two days ago, I spoke to him. And he says that he's playing in a church now. I said, well, praise the Lord. Then he told me where he was playing. He said, yeah, I pray for the Catholics now. I'm like, really? Then he went on to tell me the things that he was doing and all of that. And I said, uh, I said, sweetheart, do you know that they, they worship idols? He said, yeah, I know they worship idols, but that has nothing to do with me. That's not going to stop me from playing music in the church. I'm like, Lord. Hallelujah. Anything that we connect ourselves to, we are in, ag in agreement with. I didn't got completely off of the lesson talking about the special responsibility, the three dimensions of Christ being as firstborn. Hallelujah. 
which I did want I didn't want to get off because I usually we usually don't do um, the Roman study on Monday on Monday morning it's usually kingdom living but we finished kingdom living two weeks ago but Luke chapter 19 verse 10 hallelujah it reads for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost the son of man come to seek and to save that which was lost Matthew chapter 18 verse 11 reads for the son of man has come to save that which was lost Christ's responsibility but as the firstborn over all creation the Lord Jesus is also responsible for his creation so when mankind the pentacle of that creation fell he fulfilled his special responsibility as firstborn over all creation and came down to the earth to rescue us and bring us back into relationship with the father again and it is precisely it is precisely because Jesus took responsibility as firstborn over all creation that he became the firstborn from among the dead. God cared for his creation. And he created man. Hallelujah. And in the beginning, he, he, he already had a plan. He already had a plan set. Christ is mentioned in Genesis chapter 3 in the beginning. And because God loved us so much, the Bible says in John 3.16, and everybody should know this one by heart, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God loved us so much, beloved, that he himself manifested himself in the flesh and became man so that he can identify with us, experience what we experience, and that the final blow is that he would nail sin once and for all to the cross. Christ shed his blood from the garden of Gashemin to the cross he did this all out of love beloved because he loved us so much and he came to save the lost he came to save us which was lost we were lost beloved to the father through the disobedience of Adam through that blood all of us have the blood of Adam. Sin flows through the blood. Jesus first born from among the dead. Hallelujah. Jesus first born from among the dead. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 if you turn your swords there Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 and it reads he is also the head the life source and the leader of the body the church he is the beginning the firstborn from the dead so that he himself will accompany the first place he will stand supreme and preeminent and be preeminent in everything. Christ, hallelujah, is the firstborn among the dead. Revelations chapter 1 verse 5 reads, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful and trustworthy witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who always loves us, and who has once for all freed us or washed us from our sins by his own blood, his sacrificial death. 
Christ is the firstborn among the dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20 reads, But now as things really are, Christ has in fact been raised from the dead, and he became the first fruits, that is, the first to be resurrected with an incorruptible immortal body, foreshadowing the resurrection of those who have fallen asleep in death. He was resurrected with, he was resurrected in an incorruptible immortal body. The flesh died. Hallelujah. And he put on immorality, incorruptible. Our flesh is corruptible, beloved. Our flesh is corrupted. And in our flesh dwells sin. But Christ crucified sin to the nailed it to the cross. He crucified it. He paid the price to forgive us so that we can be forgiven of our sins. And that when we die and he comes back for those that are in the grave will be resurrected with incorruptible and immortal bodies. They will be resurrected to life eternal. And those that are still alive when Christ returns will be caught up to meet him in the air and they will be transformed in a twinkling of an eye. The incorruptible body, this flesh will fall off and Christ the Messiah will give us an incorruptible mortal body. The flesh is wicked. The flesh is sinful, beloved. And if we take our eyes off of Christ, we tend to follow the leading of our flesh. Hallelujah. Once we take our eyes off of Christ, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22 reads, And he put all things in, in every realm in subjection under Christ's feet and appointed him as supreme and authoritative head over all things in the church. Christ is head over all things, beloved. He is head. Verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills and completes all things in all believers. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 reads, For the husband is head of the wife, as Christ is head of the church, himself being the Savior of the body. Christ is the head of the church. Hallelujah. Jesus still remains firstborn over all creation. But now he has a new title, firstborn from among the dead. And as Paul states so clearly in Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, God's purpose in this was so that in everything he might have the supremacy. You see, when mankind fell into sin, this was a direct challenge to the firstborn status of God's son. Adam sought independence from God's rulership. He sought out a firstborn status of his own. So even though the Son of God was still firstborn over all creation, there was one small speck in all the unimaginable expanses of the created universe that stood in defiance of God's will. Man had arrogantly set himself up against uh, supreme on earth and so taking up his responsibility as firstborn over all creation the Lord Jesus entered into the arena of man's kind's rebellion he faced the cross suffered and died but then on the third day he rose back to life and opened a whole new chapter in the saga of human history 
For at that point, Christ became more than just the firstborn over all creation. He became the firstborn from among the dead. Let's take a look. Uh, we're going to take a look next week at some special positions and special inheritance and special responsibility of the second firstborn status. We're going to continue that on Monday morning talking about the positions uh, hallelujah the special position the special inheritance and the special responsibility hallelujah on this second firstborn status which is Christ was the firstborn among the dead hallelujah and we'll continue that hallelujah on Monday hallelujah well beloved thank you father for this time in your presence, O oh Lord God. We thank you, Father, for the word, Lord. We ask, O oh Father, that you would send, uh, stir up the Holy Spirit in us, O oh Lord, even more, Father. Hallelujah, that we may comprehend and understand what, your, what the word is saying to us individually. That you desire a relationship of obedience, O oh Father. Hallelujah. And that, Father, we should always confess our sins and repent, Father, whether we know them or not, O oh Lord. Father, that we are not to agree, Father, with the customs and the traditions of this world, but we are to keep our eyes on you, Father, for you told us to be separate from the world. You told us to come out from among, out of the world, Father. Touch not the unclean things, Lord, and, and the world is unclean according to your standards. Father, teach us to be obedient, to do the word, not just to be hearers of it, but to do your word, O oh Lord. And we ask, O oh Father, today that you would cover us in the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Father, that you would set your angels to encamp round about each and every individual person that is listening. And I thank you, Father, that you send your angels to war on our behalf against the unseen forces, Father, that desire to take our lives. We thank you, Father, for your word on this morning. In Christ, the Messiah's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, good morning to you, Sister Blue. Kind of got um, thrown off this morning, and I'm trying to find a way trying to find a way that I can integrate uh, Skype with uh, Spreaker I know you can do it with Mixler but I want to I, I like Spreaker hallelujah and I, I you know I like Spreaker and I pay uh, for Spreaker hallelujah for Spreaker to you know that I can record for three up to three hours and um but I want to integrate um, Skype into Spreaker, and I don't know how to do that. Hallelujah. So that we can have um, live, every now and then, live interaction with one another in the Bible studies. Hallelujah. That maybe someone else could prob want to teach a lesson, they could teach a lesson. Glory to God uh, here at Woman of Grace. Um, but if you don't have the materials that we are studying out of, the book of Romans, uh, spiritual strategies, even kingdom living, I will send that to you. If you would write wog.vitw at hotmail.com. Hallelujah. And I thank you for your prayers and for your support uh, for Women of Grace. Hallelujah. For Women of Grace, a voice in the wilderness. And, and thank you for your prayers for me that I will continue on in the good fight of faith by continuing these lessons that the Lord has assigned to me because we have some more other lessons coming up. And... Uh, I want to, to, you know, I just desire the Lord. I want all that the Lord has for me. 
I want all that the Lord has for you, the listeners, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I might not keep this particular recording for you to download. I might might end up deleting it. Hallelujah. I might end up deleting it or, or redoing it over. Hallelujah. But on Monday at 7, we meet for the Roman studies from Mon- Monday to Friday because we have already completed the uh, Kingdom Living manual from Monday to Friday at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time that would be 7, 8, 9 that would be 9.30 Central and Eastern time Hallelujah and um, if I'm not on I will be sure to email you and let you know that there will, will not be a broadcast but the only reason why we only studied the book of Romans from Monday to Thursday hallelujah is because we were doing kingdom living and I wanted to do that in the morning because when I get off of work I'm very tired hallelujah but um, but we meet every, throughout the week Monday to Friday at 7.30 Pacific time that would be 9.30 Eastern and Central time well beloved I must get ready to get ready for work but may God bless you may God keep you may God's face shine upon you as you continue to seek his face by sitting at his feet and learning from him until Monday morning God until tomorrow beloved Saturday at um, 7.30 we go in with going back into spiritual strategies I can't remember what lesson we're on I think it's lesson 12 I believe I believe it's lesson 12 I'm not quite sure don't quote me on that but we're, uh, we have our class uh, morning uh, worship teaching 7.30 hallelujah if you guys get up that early well that'll be 9.30 your time anyway but 7.30 spiritual warfare classes see because I never know if my daughter is going to be here or not Saturday you know because the kids be running around and making all kind of noise and, and pray for my grandchildren because the enemy hallelujah love to use them as a distraction hallelujah because he knows that I don't like it <laughs> but pray pray for my grandchildren that we will have peace tomorrow as we do the lessons on spiritual strategy hallelujah the enemy Ray, uh, he just don't like it when the word is being preached in the house hallelujah because I am determined beloved to to walk as God has commanded me to walk and that's to live for him glory to God and when the Holy Spirit drew me back to the fold drew me back into the father's arm he showed me through the experience that there's nothing worth dying for outside of Christ and I refuse to go back hallelujah but to be obedient and do what God has called me to do well, beloved, may God bless you today on this beautiful Friday. Hallelujah. Take a walk. Breathe in. Take a walk and see some of God's glory. Praise Him. Bless someone today. Be a man. Be a call. May it be an email. But until, mon- until tomorrow morning, God bless you, beloved, and shalom.